Welcome to this Astro Priestesses Roundtable for the Taurus Solar Month. Somehow we've made it almost all the way through the Aries Solar Month, and it has been wild <laughs> uh, and transformative. And I imagine that many people who've been listening to this, uh, it's like you had the eclipse experience that you had. Uh, we we're all just talking about our eclipse experience has been pretty amazing. And sometimes, uh, some unexpected energies have come in and maybe directed us in different ways. And so, uh, as the sun moves into Taurus on April 19th, uh, it's just the day before the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus it's been 84 years, I think, 83 or 84 years since they've been together in Taurus. They come together every 13 years in different signs, but it's been a really long time. And so if we think of a conjunction as being similar to a new moon, when two, when the sun and the moon come together and, and we have a new moon, well, when two planets come together, it's like, like a new moon energy, a seed planting time for that energy. And thinking about Uranus, and Jupiter, they're both visionary. They're both, um, some, someone might like to say that Uranus is the higher octave of Jupiter, which I don't know if I totally agree with that because, <laughs> because it's like each of the planets has their own energy and what they offer and what they bring. And so we don't want to necessarily compare them or say it in that way. But to have these two planets coming together in the Taurian mysteries, and we've been experiencing this for some time, actually, Jupiter went into Taurus last year, um, and it's been catching up to Uranus this whole time. So the, um, the opportunity is that we get to see things in a different way, and especially around the Taurian mysteries. Taurus is all about uh, how are we living in the greatest amount of pleasure and beauty and being able to savor the uh, extraordinary opportunity we have to be alive on the planet at this time. Uh, how are we really um, creating a, a deeper intimacy with the earth? How are we creating a deeper intimacy with ourselves? How are we creating a, um, an earth that is a paradise? We could think of, um, you know, what's happened on the earth hasn't what humans have done to the earth hasn't really been about that it seems like it's been more about how are we taking advantage of the resources how are we, you know how have we been polluting the earth how have we been uh not really honoring and celebrating the earth although there are many of us who do that and i feel like this is a seed point to take us into doing that even more and that perhaps that each of us who are doing that and vibrating with that energy, it, it sends a ripple effect into the earth, into the world to do that even more. So that's part of what I'm seeing as how this is, you know, it's, I think we're going to go in unexpected directions. Uranus is all about that. It's, go, we're going to be breaking free of the old perceptions of how it is that we've been living on the earth so we can get into new uh, ways, cutting edge uh, new ways of perceiving and being with planet Earth. And of course, uh, Jupiter is going to help expand the visions around how we do that. So I'm just going to uh, turn this over now, just because uh, it just feels like the most important thing happening in this Taurus solar month. So I'm just going to turn it over and see where we go from here. What I was uh, feeling with this uh, Jupiter Uranus conjunction is like it's woven into the eclipse in a way because it's like we are still in the solar uh, lunation that it was started by the solar eclipse. So there is this new beginning in Aries, the impulse, but we had Mercury retrograde. So during this Jupiter Uranus conjunction, we still have Mercury retrograde. And, and Mars is still in Pisces. So um, there is this impulse for something new. There is this inner revolution with the Uranus and Jupiter, but we still don't have the clarity and we don't have even the energy to go for it that much until Mars enters Aries that is going to be within this month in the 30th, at the end of the month. So I think that is the moment of just saying, okay, now go for it. So during all this time, we are having these revelations that they are very planted as we were talking in the last uh, season, like is 
dreaming with Saturn and Mars in Pisces. Mars is going to get closer to Neptune as well. So the opportunity to, to really receive the information for that new thing that we are bringing forward. The thing is uh, emphasized with this conjunction of Jupiter, Uranus, that is truly telling us in which areas of our lives we are trying to live a life that is obsolete. It's like, just done, just break it free because Taurus doesn't like change that much. It's like, if this chocolate is good, why am I going to try a new one? But sometimes maybe you are missing the best chocolate in the world. So there is this idea of something can be good, but maybe there is something even better. There is something even more enjoyable that you are not allowing yourself to experience, all of us, because it requires a change in our identity. And I think that is what is happening with this Uranus uh, Jupiter uh, conjunction is like a show, a, a whole breaking of how we think, like especially connected with the clips also. It's like who we think we were, we are not that person anymore. So it's like, who are we? <laughs> and, and we don't have clarity yet. And it's like, how can we take action? without the clarity and how can we dream into it? How can we allow our body? I think during this Jupiter Uranus is also very important to be very connected with our bodies and our somatic experiences and the messages that come through nature and the body, doing like a shamanic journeys to receive information, and when Mars, like next month, that is still part of it, um, there will be this moment to action. And within this story, I think the full moon is also very interesting because it's in a Taurus a Scorpio. So it's bringing up a story that we have been working for several years when the nodal axis was there. And now it's like, okay, we're done with that. So whatever we have, Taurus, Scorpio, what the houses and everything, that story, we are really uh, ready for a new beginning. And it's important to be brave because the, nodal, the North Node is in Aries still, and that's the um, a healthy version of Aries and really take action. And something that I, I see a lot um mentoring like um, entrepreneurs and projects is like we really struggle with taking action and taking action sometimes means resting taking action sometimes means saying no to projects that are really draining our energy taking action is not doing more sometimes it's doing less but doing less of the right things and the right things that we are asked to do Normally, they require courage because they are the ones that we don't really want to do because they are. So it's kind of like we are distracted with all this busyness in order not to do the action that life is truly asking us. And I think that is kind of like the energy that I was feeling, especially for the ending of April and beginning of May. And then I don't have any clarity when Mars is into Aries. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to listen to all of you because I stopped there. I like, I don't know. Oh, this is juicy. I already feel that. I always love the full moon in Scorpio time. I don't know what it is. It could be because I'm Taurus rising, Scorpio descendant. Like there's something so juicy to me about this time. It's also we're in the approaching building up to Beltane time. So that midpoint between equinox and summer, like there's such a sensuality such a natural aliveness that wants to come through in this time. And I think I love that you you set it up so well, Mara, because it's this like, well, we don't know who we are yet in this new expression of self, this new initiated, healed version of self. And how juicy, because when you don't know, you're going to put on way fewer limitations 
You're not going to be living up to this, like, okay, checking all of these boxes. There's an inherent sense of freedom which I think is what the Jupiter Uranus is really about. It's like free yourself, free your body, like free yourself out of these boxes of your rituals, your routines, and, and not becoming stagnant in what's comfortable. And really, I think we can use this, this full moon energy to really help us get into that that sacred sexiness with life. I mean, that's, that's really what it's all about. You know, we want to feel the, the carpe diem. Like I want to be here fully. Like, I just want to feel this, all of this and let that be what guides me. I've been doing a lot of um, wonderful practices with myself and even on the retreat that I just led, and it's been very based on priorities and, and understanding, well, what am I doing first? And how does what I do first influence everything else that comes after it? And I was sort of assessing, well, what's natural for me to put on my list first? And I have to say, I'm really proud of myself because I was like, oh, the thing that I put on my list first is the thing I'm currently enjoying the most. It's going on my list first. It's what's getting scheduled in first. And then it's like, oh, the other things down the list, they're going to go in after. And I think it's so important to live that way because if you fill yourself up with what feels the best first, you have more energy, you have more radiance, you have more love to give, your heart is more open to experience. So I think that's the reshuffling of the priorities. It's like free yourself from all the stagnant things that you think you have to do and then come into like, well, what feels alive and joyful for me to do and just trust I will have exactly what is needed left over for the other things rather than you know spending too much time or too much energy in the things that really are not going to serve I, I, tuning into the Mars sextile to the Jupiter Uranus conjunction as well Mars in Pisces after having just began a new cycle with Saturn it seems like this whole new foundation for how we take action. And I think that it's a surrendered action kind of thing. So surrendering to our true desires and actually releasing all of the falsehoods, the false versions of self, all the things that we think we have to do to uphold some identity of who we think we have to be. So there's this new surrendered foundation, but inherent in that I think is is all of the trust that we've also been building up with all of the Aries energy. So leaning into instincts, leaning into, okay, this is what I want to do right now, but I can trust that those desires are, are seated in me for a reason. And, and so the Pisces, the Aries, the Taurus, there's a lot of opportunity here. That's what I think the Mars sextile, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction is. There's opportunity for surrendered freedom. And what else is possible when you live your life that way? So I'm really looking forward to everything this month that can really be rooted in that. Oh, I love that, Nara, because what I was literally coming through as you were sharing, and then it was like you were speaking to it as it was coming through for me is, you know, I just wanted to share. I felt like intuitively led if your if your life has been like turned upside down with this eclipse season, what's here in this Jupiter Uranus conjunction for you is possibility. Um, I feel like we can trust and whatever is coming up for us at this time, Uranus is a great awakener, right? Jupiter is the great expander. Whatever's happening is for our highest expansion to awaken to our highest truth and that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy um what's happening right now it could be right like to me uranus is so much about uranus is a great awakener it awakens us to our highest truth it's about like you spoke to nora freedom liberation and uranus speaks to the evolutionary journey of uranus is about releasing resistance so Uranus is going to speak to our relationship with Uranus. How in or out of resistance are we to living in a Taurus, right? Living in an embodied way where we'll feel free, where we'll feel liberated. So if we're like, you know, really like clinging, 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 which can be like kind of easy to do with the Taurus energy, if we're like clinging to what feels comfortable and what feels known, when Uranus is involved, it can feel like shattering. It can feel like the rug just got pulled out from under us and it can be really, really hard. Um, but 
what, when that does happen, I've had these experiences in my life that when they do happen, it is for our highest expansion. We just can't always see it. And it's for that sense of liberation. Now, if we're, if we're like really in a um, flowy way, you might say with releasing resistance, this Uranus Jupiter conjunction, and this could happen for any of us regardless can bring unexpected opportunities it can be really exciting. It's like, wow, with Jupiter there, that door just opened like there's a doorway that just opened all of a sudden that I didn't even know was there that I can step into this new possibility and I just feel like regardless you know to me like what might be helpful to look at is how much are you in and in or out of resistance to what would truly make you feel liberated in an embodied way and if you can you know voluntarily release the resistance that way Uranus won't make you well, like won't cosmically pull the rug out from from under you but whatever our relationship to it is there's so much possibility you know Uranus is connected to the full card and the tarot deck and there's infinite possibility as the fool steps off the cliff doesn't really know like we don't really see we're in the space of unknowing and being okay and the unknowing not necessarily being okay with maybe not seeing the direction at the moment, I, I feel like there's so much possibility in that. It's um, a few things with this uh, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Venus, we might say, is the guardian of the Taurus mysteries, is with Chiron in Aries. So there's this continuing Chironic theme that we've had from this eclipse season. And so what, what I sense is there's something really powerful here. This is like the initiation to really heal, you know, maybe wounds or self-limiting beliefs around our self-worth and to really embrace and embody our self-worth as we're stepping into this new possibility and that circumstances might unfold in our lives as we're going through this to really make us claim our self-worth and sometimes I'm experiencing this right now you know sometimes we might have experiences that reflect back to us, our self-limiting stories about our self-worth, our wounds, so we can heal them. We can really rise up and claim our own self-worth. And also at the time of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, Mercury is one degree from the North Node and the, the kind of the tail end of the Mercury retrograde. And there's so much I'm seeing about um, you know, rewriting our stories and our perception from this Mercury retrograde. And it's like, I've had conversations with people and it's like, wow, from the, we're both experiencing this experience together. And we have such radically different perceptions of what's happening. It feels like we're talking to someone who's on a different planet, who's having a completely different experience, even though we're experiencing the same thing. And so like really surrender and accept that from our own stories, right? This is Mercury, Moon, our own stories. We can have such radically different perceptions about the same experience and that that can be okay. That when we can, and we can in neuro, you know, you brought in some of this too before, um, that when we can just be okay and accepting, we all have our own perception or different stories. And I've also really seen with myself and others just how blind we can be to how our stories are self-limiting us and kind of putting like blinders on our perception. And when we can see the possibility that there's more ways to see this situation than I am seeing available right now, and just even opening to that awareness, maybe we can't even make ourselves see a new perception, but just to even acknowledge there's more ways to see what's unfolding than the way I can see things. And there's more possibilities and opportunities and options available to me than I see right now, then it's like things can really open up. And I feel like with Uranus with the, I mean, with Mercury with the North Node at the time of this Jupiter Uranus conjunction at the tail end of Mercury retrograde, it's like there are new ways to see things that will open up new possibilities and new new directions forward. And and I and I totally agree with you, Mar, and what you were sharing. It's like this a continuation of eclipse season. And um it feels like we've been surrendering so much. We're opening to new possibility. We don't really know the new possibility we're opening it to yet. And what I do sense is it's more beautiful, Taurus, right? More beautiful and abundant than we can ever imagine that there's 
just to, to me, like just being okay with being in that wild unknown, being okay with being out of our comfort zone of needing to know if we can do that and be open that there's more ways to see things than I can see right now. And there's more op opportunities and possibility and there's abundance right here that maybe I can't even see. Maybe I can open up and receive. Venus is about receiving. Like I just, I feel that um, there's wild, wild possibility here. Oh my gosh. Thank you, um, everybody, for your insights. And I'm, um, I, I have a couple of thoughts coming up. One, uh, following up on what you were saying, Jamie, about resistance, because sometimes I notice that I really have a desire to not be resisting, but I'm resisting my resisting. <laughs> so then that brings us to how do we get to acceptance and how do we accept what is? Uh, and uh, I've been revisiting uh <clears throat> uh, Ken Kai's book, he wrote Handbook to Higher Consciousness and also a book called Prescriptions for Happiness. And uh, the first prescription, he says, is to ask for what you want, but don't demand it, which I feel like is probably a really good thing to do in a new moon time or like a you know Uranus and Jupiter coming together in Taurus for the first time in many, many years. And uh, so asking for what we want, but not from a demanding kind of place. So what is it that we're choosing what is it that we're wanting to create in as we're creating a new earth paradise what would that look like how would that be but and ask for it because if we don't ask for it we won't get it <laughs> so let's so start asking for that but not with a demanding kind of like this has to happen energy and the second one he has is accept what is for now and this one has been really speaking to me a lot lately and i i really got into this probably in the oh gosh, over 15, 20, 15, 20 years ago. And, and now I'm revisiting it again. It just kind of came back on my awareness into my um, field of, of awareness and uh, the idea of accepting what is. And sometimes that's not easy. And if you can just, if we can just, you know, cause we can, we can resist accepting too. We can resist resisting. We can resist accepting. We can resist those things. And so sometimes maybe we just need to give ourselves the space to accept that we're resisting <laughs> and, that, and that we're uh that and that we need to just be with that and feel that and experience that and not necessarily try to rush through that although some of us might be you know with all the aries energy might be a little impatient and want to get there quicker but <laughs> anyway um so accepting what is for now and he, and one of the things he says is you might not accept it 10 minutes from now you might not accept it Two minutes from now you but but if you can just find a place to accept it for at least a moment and then just keep coming back to that practice as and also because we're being um opened up to new possibilities as jamie was talking about uh that we don't even haven't even imagined we don't even know what they are going to be and uh and if we're so stuck in the resistance and keeping um our vision locked down or not open or expanded, then we can miss opportunities that are going to just be amazing for us. So with all of this, I just wanted to say um, too, that uh, something unique that's happening this uh, month on April 27th is that Sedna is returning to Gemini and she, and Gemini is the storyteller. How are we telling the new story? Sedna's story, how she's like the divine feminine who sunk, sank down to the bottom of the ocean or down to the bottom of our subconscious, rising back up and now having a new way of expressing herself and um, coming back into a greater sense of consciousness and awareness with the Pleiades. So the 29 degrees Taurus point and the zero degrees Gemini point is where the Pleiades are currently located. And that changes over time, but that's what's happening for now. And it'll be that way for probably, you know, close to 72 years. I think I'm trying to think the last two planets, uh, two stars of the Pleiades move into Gemini in the next 20 or 30 years. So it's, you know, then they'll all be around zero Gemini, but, uh, the, uh, so, so in bringing in that energy, it's like what, um, what the magical stars that we can, that we can work with to also help enhance our intentions and with Sedna coming back here, and it's every 11,500 years, she went into Gemini last year. She came back into the 29 Taurus. She's coming back into 
Gemini on April 27th, the same day Venus is going into the underworld. So it's kind of like a rising and a setting happening simultaneously between these two, which is very fascinating. And, uh, and being willing to surrender and die to the old ways. Ultimately, Venus is saying, okay, I'm dying to who I think I am so I can be reborn to who I really am. And Sedna is, is rising up and saying, hey, I am here to be seen and, and known in a different way. Something to know is that Sedna um, has an 11,500 year orbit. We didn't even know she existed until 2003. Uh, she's making her closest approach to the sun in 2070 something, 2076, I want to say. Uh, and she's going to be in Gemini until 2066. So she's she doesn't move fast, but she's moving faster than she usually moves, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Anyway, and then all this, um, all the Taurian energy, as uh, Nora was pointing out, we have the we have Beltane coming up when the sun reaches 15 degrees of Taurus. We have um, Mercury is, uh, well, we'll have the sun um, conjunct Uranus on, um, on May 13th. And then Mercury goes into Taurus on May 15th. And then um, Venus will conjunct Uranus on May 18th. And then the sun conjuncts Jupiter on May 18th also. And then um, Mars, Oh, sorry. Nope, not, not that one. But then the sun goes into Gemini on May 19th. So our solar month is ending on the 18th with all this Taurus energy. So we're just getting started with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. So mind-blowing. So amazing. And such a great opportunity that we haven't maybe ever had on planet Earth before. So with that, I love that the story of Sedna in connection with the full moon, because like the full moon is bringing, I forgot when I mentioned it before, is a square in Pluto as well. Like, so it is an intense full moon, right? Like Scorpio by itself is already like, go there, right? Let's go to the fears. Let's go to the underworld. Venus, as Kylie was saying, is also going into the underworld. Set now with the story into these waters, these deep waters and all the gifts that we can bring from there. And then the new moon in Taurus is close, very, very close to the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So it's a another activation of that, that happens on the 21st, but then May 8th is like activated. So it's also a really nice day to do like ceremony for that new thing that we want to embrace and embody because Taurus is all about embodying that energy and it's not from the mind, is is everything that we are talking about here is not something that we can discover by thinking about it. It's something that we can just dance it and walk. And then how, when we walk, new ideas come through also, like when we move the body, the cellular memory. And, and this is something that it was coming to me when Kylie was talking about the new stories that we are bringing forward with Sedna. And with these play, play, uh, players as well, energy is like the memory is in ourselves, is in our DNA. And we are not going to find our mission, our role in life outside of ourselves because it's all encrypted inside. We just need to uh, allow the space. And sometimes I think with the, the way that society is built, there is no the space for towers to really enjoy. And what is coming to me is the same that the, our sexual encounters, right? It's like, what do we want? Something just like quick and fast, or oh, we want something slow and then take the time and then feel the energy of the other person and then really truly connect through the heart and truly connect with the other person and have this experience for hours. Like, what do we really want? And, and this is something that if we are in a very fast uh, 
mood that sometimes is necessary. But if we are there, we are missing the cellular memory because that's very quiet. It takes uh, attention and intention and it takes silence and space. So I think this month, in order to have all these revelations that we are talking about, all this new reality, there is this need for all of us. And it's coming through me as we are sharing, right? Like it's very clear always that how we are weaving the story together. And it's like, how can we find that time to, to really be, as Nura was saying, the priorities, what makes me joyful and what I enjoy the most. And I know for some people, maybe there is not other space, right? Like if you are a mom with a little child and working in a normal job with the normal normal <laughs> schedule that we set, and that is re the revolution, that's not normal. We are not meant to work 10 hours non-stop in something that we don't love. So I think the whole um, Taurus mystery is kind of like, how can we pri uh, make a priority of that pleasure and in that new moon to really set the intention to say in whatever my reality is with that acceptance of what is my reality as uh, Kajeling was saying is how can I bring more pleasure in a very simple way it doesn't have to be complicated but through that pleasure information is coming through as well yes oh here's to information through pleasure I'm about that who else <laughs> I love that you brought in the Pluto square because especially in fixed signs, you know, Taurus, Scorpio, fixed earth and fixed water and then fixed air. There's so much energy around breaking out of kind of stubborn holding patterns that are actually very easy to kind of get stuck in. It's it's pretty easy to kind of say, okay, this is the this is the algorithm, this is the pace, this is what we're doing now, and it, it can be it can kind of pull us in because it's so um, it can sustain itself. So in one sense, that's the gift of fixed signs is like once you get something started with fixed energy, it can stay followed through, it can last last a long time but that also means the reverse like we can kind of get ourselves pulled into like oh no now all of a sudden looking at this phone first thing in the morning is like fixed into my habitual patterning so it's easy to get kind of hooked into habits that are not supportive but that being said this full moon square pluto is also an opportunity to unhook from unhealthy habits and patterns that we don't want to see us get fixed into so what was coming through when you were mentioning all of that mod was the difference between neurotransmitters and hormones so if you've ever studied you know anatomy or amp class it's you kind of learned that neurotransmitters are like the text messages. Like they're just coming immediately. Boom. Okay. Had the thought it's there, you know, chat GPT. What's the answer to all of these questions? Boom. Here's the answer. And then hormones are like snail mail. <laughs> they take a bit of time to work through the system. And when you ever make a change, even something as simple as like breathing differently or sitting differently with your posture, it's going to help you to open up you know, thyroid, parathyroid glands, like all your body is, is going to move differently. It's going to trigger this, this cascade of hormonal experience in your body that you actually need to give it time to do the work that it's going to do. It's, it's not going to happen immediately the same way that we might be able to tune into with the neurotransmitter. And so it kind of gets, you know, there's, there's a lot of back and forth here, but the whole point that I'm trying to make is we need to give ourselves time for the changes to actually see the results. And that's where I think Taurus and Scorpio, they can really help stretch us into that possibility. So it's like holding things a little bit longer. Um, I had a really wonderful yoga teacher who just told me, you know, stay in the pose until you feel something change. 
If you're just trying to move through quick, like boom, 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 this is my asana practice. I'm just going to do it to get out of it. Like I'm, I'm trying to do all the poses just so that I could say that I did them because I know they're good for me versus I'm going to stay in this forward fold until I actually feel something shift inside me. So I think there's something to honoring slowness as a form of medicine, as a form of this is actually going to help me. And so there could be, you know, that in conjunction with the liberation of who we think we are in our creative process. We've talked so much about resistance. I mean, maybe the resistance is changing how we do what we do. Like we're resistant to change because we're comfortable with the patterns. And what if instead of feeling like, oh, my resistance is to doing all these things that I don't want to do. It's like, well, what if the resistance was to actually slowing down a little bit? And all of the thoughts that come up well, like, oh, no, if I don't do X, Y, Z, then I'm going to go live under a bridge somewhere. You know, like we kind of go to the worst possible case scenario. Like if I'm not hustling and working so hard and working so fast, like I'm going to end up in some like horrible experience. I talk about this all the time with my friends. It's like there's going to be a lot of steps from here to there. You're going to have a lot of moments before you living under a bridge happens. So you can afford to take a break. You can afford to take a rest and, and reassess and, and slow down and honor your pace. And so how else can you really tune into a rhythm that works for you if you don't sort of unhook from the algorithm or unhook from... Um, there's a term in like music studies that's called listener obedience you know, like the the typical like three minutes of a song that has a very steady B and it kind of is programmed specifically to make you feel things. And it's according to this very specific and limited band of frequency that it's, you know, it's kind of like a form of brainwashing or it can be. So that, that being sort of hooked into the listener obedience, it kind of makes us expect and place an, a subconscious expectation on all music that we hear to sound like that or to kind of lead us through a similar process or a similar feeling cascade which then if you kind of then listen to something like jazz or you listen to like any kind of other music that's outside of the mainstream you start to realize oh like my brain is being asked to to experience this differently like it's not fitting in the box the puzzle piece of the way music is supposed to happen so I'm being challenged by these vibrations and all of a sudden I'm liberated because I'm not in that box of listener obedience. So even Taurus having such an affinity with sound, sound healing, the sound waves, like that can be a really powerful way. I think kind of bringing it all back to the Jupiter Uranus is that's part of the amplification of a new vibration, like amplify something outside of the, whatever is the the form of listener obedience that you might have been into. I mean, we can tie that even to, you know, if you consume social media, it's like, well, there's the real and it's supposed to be this long, you know, and there's all of these rules and structures around how to get the algorithm to see you. It's like, well, who's training who here? Are we training the algorithms or is the algorithm training us to kind of fit into that mold? So I think this, you know, we can use the word resistance in a lot of ways. You know, we can be we can be the resistance to to listener obedience or algorithm obedience. And that's really, I think, where where the freedom comes. But we have to be able to give ourselves the time and space away from it long enough to realize, oh, this is my rhythm. Oh, this is where I'm at right now. So I, I ultimately feel like everything comes together for this beautiful, um, I would say, biological empowerment this month. Oh, I love that, Nora. And as you're sharing about sound, I'm always fascinated with what's happening in my environment and how it relates to what I want to bring through and the greater messages here. There's like someone, a neighbor, like with a leaf blower or I don't know, something out the window. And I have the hardest time with those kinds of like industrial sounds. They just feel like they scramble my nervous system. And um, you know, I, I think there's a message here because Jupiter is moving through the last decan of uh, Taurus while we're in this world, well, we'll be in the Taurus solar month. Jupiter is going to move into Gemini um, May 25th and we'll be in Gemini for a year. Jupiter in May of 2023 first moved into Taurus. So we're, we're working with, there's this opportunity for this um, expansive 
groundedness, this expansive embodiment as Jupiter is moving through the last decade of Taurus and even coming, meeting Uranus along the way, I feel like we're really being initiated. How expansive can we get through our embodiment? Like how deeply can we root in our body and, and to be so grounded that we can have this, um, expansiveness, no matter like what chaos might be going on around us and how can we through our body move with that energy. And you kind of spoke to that Nura, like as, cause I was, even before you spoke to, I was sitting here, like, I really want to kind of like move and like rock to be able to work that like chaotic sound that I'm hearing, like through my energy field. And so I think that we do have this really powerful opportunity to really tap into the brilliance and the wisdom of our body, how to move with energy, how to move with what might feel like chaotic energy coming from the outside, especially Pluto goes retrograde uh, May 2nd, I believe. And this will be initiating, now Pluto is going retrograde, I believe at two Aquarius, but Pluto is initiating moving back to Capricorn for the last time, you know, in our lifetime, unless there's some like really wild like technological advance um because pluto has a 245 year cycle but so this last time of pluto going back into capricorn and you know we're, we're we might see some um we're going to continue to probably see some chaotic things on the world stage as it's like the last power grab for the old world and then it's like you know we're, we're, we're just the old world is dying or being reborn into this new this new earth frequency and we're in this we're in the you know, we're midwiping this new world. And so and there's also beauty, there's beauty and abundance all around us that we can tap into. But I feel the more grounded and embodied we are, um, and that will help us move through the energy of anything that feels chaotic that's happening. And as also as Jupiter is moving through the last decan of Taurus, there's so, this is like the opportunity to also tap into the wild abundance and expansion that's here. And it's, we're tapping into it through our bodies. Like how much can we get in our bodies and really open up and receive and tapping into gratitude, I feel is so important right now, even when it feels like, gosh, if things aren't going the way I want them in life too, like, you know, kind of Kaylin, you spoke to that, just accepting that we might be in resistance, but also finding gratitude to finding gratitude for what is and what we do have that gratitude is just really magnetic to even open up and receive more abundance and doing whatever it is that makes you feel open and receptive and abundant as well but also big big new expansive opportunities jupiter brings right place right time jupiter brings faded things divine synchronicity divine timing some i mean i've had those like when jupiter's doing stuff in my chart it's like well, wow. sometimes that's just when I didn't see it coming, just that person reached out and offered me that opportunity. You know, there's a lot of, you know, kind of the uh, faded things that could be coming into our life right now, especially with the Uranus, uh, Jupiter Uranus conjunction, um, lots of exciting opportunities. And I always mention when there's with Uranus, if sometimes new and exciting opportunities come out of nowhere and that they often are where we don't have a lot of time to make a decision when you're honest. It's like quick moving change. And it's like the doors open and as fast as the doors open, it may close for right now. Of course, doors can always open again later. And when your honest is involved, we often do have to make quick decisions. So this is a really powerful opportunity to trust into our instinctual um, wisdom and when Uranus is involved, if something feels right, but it feels scary, but you're really checking in with your discernment, if it feels right in your heart, that's when it's like often a really powerful time. Take that leap of faith, even when if it, even if it feels scary, of course, don't do it blindly. Check in with your discernment. But I always say when Uranus is involved, if a new opportunity comes out of nowhere and you have to make a quick decision that feels right and it feels scary, go for it. Take that leap of faith. Oh, yeah. Yeah, take the leap of faith. <laughs> and sometimes it can feel like we get diverted off on a path that wasn't the the path that we thought we were going to be on, but it winds up being the perfect path. <laughs> so in some way that we couldn't have imagined. So I'm I'm feeling like uh I'm inspired to come up with, and I've been doing this for a while anyway, but it, I'm just kind of gonna add to it that maybe we have 
that's a kind of touchstone that we come back to. So I'm going to offer one that I'm uh, feeling into, and then maybe each of you can offer one that you're feeling into as we wrap this up. So um, for me, I'm thinking genuine, healthy, embodied, sacred pleasure and acceptance. <laughs> okay. So. I absolutely second that. Something that we did at the retreat was every single morning we put on some music and we just got into our bodies and danced. And I think that was a big theme was just tuning into music and vibration that really serves us where we're at. And so I would very much invite everybody to make some playlists, really Fill it with your favorite songs, your favorite sounds, and just get into what feels good in, in your body. For me, it often looks like, okay, it's partially yoga and it's also a free dance rooms and it's also some sounds coming out and not being afraid to get a little weird, especially if you're just by yourself. <laughs> Gratitude. Yeah. Mm, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say gratitude and leave it at that. <laughs> yes, yes. I was just uh, wanted to add when Nora was saying that the, that this is the feminine mysteries were like that. Like the women, the priestesses is about dancing and singing and holding a space in that way through movement. And it's very important for women to sing in that way with the tribe and to dance with each other, to create community in a very flesh kind of way. Because it's, it's like it's magical how our periods synchronize with each other. And when you are a long time with another woman, and then suddenly it's like the same cycle. And it's a natural thing that has been taken away from us. And I think the revolution now is to bring it back and to really enjoy that, that is just natural. Mm, yes, I and that. I would love to maybe, I don't know if any of you have anything else to say, but maybe as we're closing out, we can all own together because there's something so special about the sounds when we're sharing sound it's we're connecting our hearts in that way. So you watching too, maybe you can own with us when we own out. Yeah, oh, I love that. And I just want to also share um, coming back to the possibility of the wild present moment. Taurus is so much about the present moment. And if you can like come into your body and feel the possibility in every moment, it's really powerful. Yeah, because we tend to live in the past or the future. So coming into the present is, is definitely what Taurus would, where we can experience the greatest amount of pleasure. So just saying. I love it. Let's all <laughs> yes. inhale together. Oh. Oh.